Hello people and welcome to Visions in Tokyo, the first Visions in Tokyo of 2021. If you're new here, my name is Johnny Dub. I'm a street photographer based out in Japan. And today should be a pretty cool episode because we're going to be talking about these guys. They are the Takina ATXM 23 and 33 millimeter lenses f1.4 for the Fuji X mount. Let's go. About a month ago, I heard that Tokina were releasing a pair of Fuji X mount autofocus lenses. And uh, when I heard this, I actually reached out to Tokina and asked them whether or not they would be willing to uh, let me get hold of a couple of the lenses to do a review on my YouTube channel. And to my surprise, they very kindly said yes. So I've had these lenses now for about a month and I've gotten to use them quite extensively over the last uh, month or so. Uh, it's been difficult because of coronavirus and uh, obviously that's on the rise here in Japan. But I have gone out and I've taken some video, I've shot some time lapse, I've used them in the street a couple of times and I even used them on a professional portrait shoot that I did. So I feel like I've really had the time to kind of get to learn these lenses and see what they are they're like and I'll be honest I've enjoyed using them. Now before we get into the video a couple of um, technical things that people may be interested in. Firstly the, they come in a 23 and a 33 millimeter um, focal range which gives about a 35 and a 50 equivalent which is a uh, very widely used, particularly for me as a street photographer, those are kind of the two sort of focal ranges I would gravitate to. Um, they both have exactly the same footprint, the weights are slightly different. Um, all the technical information I'll link in Tokina website if you want to go into detail on that. But um, just a couple of other things, it's 10 elements in 9 groups, they're 9 aperture blades and they have an STM autofocus motor which is very fast and very very quiet we'll have a look at that later and um, the other thing to mention is that they are de-clicked aperture uh, the, the aperture dial is on the actual uh, lens body but it's de-clicked so some people may like that some people may not I personally think it's it's been designed for that kind of hybrid shooter um, that kind of prosumer level hybrid shooter uh, oh the other thing is they come with metal lens hoods which is nice and the lens hoods uh, lock into place very snugly um, so firstly we'll have a look at the video that I shot now this was done in Hanegi Park which is a little park near me I shot them using the X-T3 and I was using a tripod and a, just doing some handheld stuff so we'll have a look at that video uh, it was all shot manual focus as well but we'll have a look at that video and you guys can tell me what you think <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little video of Hanegi Park. It's a really cool little space uh, in Setagaya. Um, there's always loads of activity going on there, loads of stuff for, for all ages really. It's a really cool little place. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, I wanted to look at the autofocusing of this lens, um, particularly for video. And um, one thing I've noticed in the past when I had a microphone attached is um, often it picks up the sound of the lens. Um, whereas this one, it's so negligible that it's barely noticeable. So in order to demonstrate this, I, I set up a little um, a, a little shot upstairs uh, looking out over Shinjuku and I basically did a comparison between the 33mm lens and the Fuji 35mm lens. I had a microphone mounted on top and I just want to play you those so you can see me kind of focusing from the nearest focal range to the, the furthest back and forward and you can see basically how, how well these, these lenses uh, the autofocus and also the noise that's created. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so hopefully that demonstrated just how quiet the autofocus is on both these lenses. I gave you an idea, especially for video uh, makers and f filmmakers, uh, it's something to consider uh, if you're thinking about buying a lens like this. Um, so that's kind of the video side of things. Now I want to focus on the things that I really like, which is the photography. So I took this lens out uh, a couple of times. Um, I did some POV shots with the GoPro attached to the, the lens. Uh, one in Asakusa with, when it was a kind of a overcast day. Um, and the other was uh, in bright sunlight. It was a really sunny afternoon in my local neighborhood. So I'm gonna show you those now. Um, and I kind of just talk a bit over the top about um, uh, you know, using these lenses for that process. But I will say that I have really enjoyed uh, using them for street photography. And they're definitely gonna remain pretty firmly in my bag uh, you know when I when I go out shooting so I'm looking forward to going and taking more of these but anyway let's have a look at some of those videos and then uh, yeah let me know what you think okay so I'm out in Asakusa and I started the day using the 33 millimeter lens I'm also shooting in JPEGs as I wanted to see how nicely the lenses render Fuji's film simulations so all the simulations are up on the screen with all the settings that I used uh, I saw this chap actually quite early on and uh, had a little chat to him. He's from Korea and he, he likes his uh, traditional, I don't know, war attire. So he, he gets dressed up in his spare time for a bit of fun. Thought it was quite an interesting photo. Not the thing that you see every day. I was also using um, the autofocus as opposed to manual. I, I tend to use manual when I'm out shooting, but <clears throat> I wanted to see how well the autofocus operates in a sort of run and gun street photo setup. And yeah, I was really pleased. It really kind of snaps to the subject and it's very, very fast. Um, it would miss from time to time, um, like I think, you know, but I, th I think a lot of the time, I I'm so quick with the camera, it it's difficult and it, it performed really well considering, you know, how, how, I, how I tend to shoot. So all this first slot were 33mm and I'm shooting wide open or, or close to for, for most of them uh, and now I decided I'd switch over to the 23. I'd, st I'd started to get into the actual grounds of the temple <clears throat> so I wanted to shoot some wider shots so I can actually get some of this beautiful architecture in there. I see a couple of girls in kimonos um, and I really like how the across uh, rendered the, 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 the tones of that one. So yeah now I'd switch to film simulations again. Um, I was actually using film bracketing so every photo would take three images and I'd have different film simulations set so I could just choose between them. And again, all the settings are listed if, you, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Osaka is an amazing, uh, sort of very traditional part of Tokyo and it's definitely worth a visit if you ever get to come out here. This shrine is usually, uh, well this temple is usually really, really busy for the people. So it's quite surreal to see it, it as quiet as it is and you know, not ideal for taking the kind of photos I like to take, but um, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed using both these lenses. I think they performed really, really well throughout the day. Um, and I was happy with the results I was getting. Um, 
I like the way that it has rendered the colours and the tones in the using the different film simulations. And some I perform, prefer more than others. I really like Provia and I really like the classic, classic Chrome. But Velvia to me is a little bit too saturated, so it's not one that I use generally anyway. Um, here's a chap in a very effeminate uh, kimono going about his business, but I like his vibe. The people here are really friendly as well. They didn't mind me taking photos. I, I, I don't tend to sort of ask people uh, you know for their photo I tend to try and do it more discreet and capture the moment but you know if, if if they see me and they want their photo taken then I'm more than happy to do that and this is kind of came to the end of the day here um, but yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed those photos and uh, we'll get to some more later So that was the beautiful area of Asakusa and Sensoji Temple. Um, I hope you enjoyed those photos. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna have a look in my local neighborhood. And this time I'm gonna be uh, doing more manual focusing. I'm gonna treat this like I would uh, any other lens rather than specifically going out to test out the autofocus and, and things like that. I wanna uh, just use it as I would do it normally. So uh, it's a beautiful sunny afternoon and yeah, I've got some shots to show you. So yeah, let me see what you think. Okay, so for this next set of photos, I decided it was a beautiful day. I'd take the 33mm lens out and I'd use it how I'd normally use a lens. So I was shooting manually this time. I was uh, shooting in RAW and aperture priority mode. And I was really interested to see kind of what kind of images I could get out of this camera, uh, editing them the way I would normally edit, uh, edit my photos. Now here, just near my house, I found this little uh, pipe that had been, uh, it's part of a playground that I, I saw these, these two people sat there and I thought it could make for quite an interesting little shot. And this is a new area that's just been built, uh, an area called Bonus Track, and here they have some sort of Corona, Corona, Corona cage, that's what I'm going to call it, the Corona cage, where people can sit in there, drink their coffee and uh, not get infected by coronavirus. At least I think that's the plan. Now, for these shots, I was uh, shooting at about between anything between like f5.6 to f8, which is usually what I'll shoot in the daytime street. It gives me a nice, uh, decent uh, depth of field. And um, again, shooting manual, um, I find that I tend to hit more shots than I do when I'm shooting uh, with the autofocus. Um, it's more consistent for me and how I shoot. Um, and also the actual manual focusing ring on these, these lenses is really, really nice. There's a really nice amount of resistance. I would say the, um, the aperture ring is, if anything, a little bit stiff for me. Um, it's good because it's clickless. It's good that it, you know, it's less likely to get knocked out of position, um, but it is very stiff. You have to kind of really give it a good twist to, to move it, but that's no, no, no big issue. This photo I, I thought was quite interesting. It was a corner, a like mirrored corner, and I, I waited there for a moment until this guy came past with his bike, and I don't know, I thought it made for quite an interesting shot. And here's a, a bunch of people uh, not social distancing, but you know, let's hope they don't get sick. Now here there's this nice column of light, and I decided it'd be a good place to try and get some of these high contrast images. So I actually uh, brought the exposure compensation down by uh, a third and then by a full stop because I wanted to make sure I kept the highlights uh, were totally in check. But then I knew that I was gonna reduce the shadows uh, to sort of almost like blackness. And yeah, I, you know, I, I like this kind of style. I like how they look, you know. Let me know your thoughts if you, if you think it, you know, you like this, this kind of high contrast image. It's certainly something I aspire to do from time to time. And here, the smoking area, um, it had this kind of dirty window so I thought it'd be quite interesting to try and shoot through that just to get a little bit of texture uh, in front of the people. A very dapper guy here, I like the uh, his leather bag so I took a little photo of that you know and again I love how the colours have turned out here. The These lenses are really nice I think for how they render the colours. I mean obviously these are raw files but you know the, it still does play a part but um, here you can see you know how nice and sharp it is and there's some great detail on this image, which I was really happy with how that came out. This is actually right in front of the train station in Shimokitazawa. It's usually really busy with people, but again, this time of the year, because of coronavirus, it's, it's not as busy, but, you know, we still go out and take some photos anyway. And here's some young chap smoking. Bad habit, but, you know, makes for a good photo. And this is the final one, there's some, some guy walking towards me, uh, caught, caught him looking at the camera, 
and yeah quite happy with that so yeah let me know your thoughts on those those images okay so that was the Tokina ATXM 23 and 33 millimeter X mount lens review done finished uh, let me know your thoughts on these lenses and yeah a couple of final thoughts from me on these lenses um, I've really enjoyed using them uh, I've enjoyed making this uh, this uh, review it's the first kind of proper full review that I've done and um, yeah it's been really good I wish the circumstances were slightly different I feel I could have uh, done a few things differently but yeah I've really enjoyed using them and getting to know these lenses and I think that I'm going to continue using them um, you know for, for the future um, I think there's a lot of newer third-party lens manufacturers coming to the market now for Fuji X mount a lot of manual focusing lenses uh, particularly out of China and there's some great lenses that you can have um, for, for a good price but I think with these you know you're getting the they're a little bit more expensive than some of the other things that are available but you are getting the autofocus um, you're getting a really well-made lens you're getting the declicked aperture you're getting Japanese optics which uh, uh, you know and you're getting it made from a company that's been around since the 1950s who you know then they're not a new lens manufacturer you know they've been making lenses you know very good lenses for quite some time now so you know something worth considering I mean you let me know your thoughts but anyway uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and as always drop a like subscribe comment do all that good stuff but for me, Johnny Dub, Visions in Tokyo, I bid you farewell. Thank you for watching. Peace.